Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Pamela Lucas here, the house of Pamela Renee, and yes, Mew. She, you know, like I said before, uh, she's interned from Johnson County Community College, and she is such a big help to me. Woo, I'm very happy about that. All right, so House of Pamela Renee, where fashion meets education. So today we're going to look at a few things. Okay, Mew, let's take a look at. Okay, so you want to. Yeah, on this side. You see how it comes off on the other side? Look at that. So, taffeta. We are designing today. We're doing, we're doing sleeves. We're doing bishop sleeves today. So, uh, let's see if you guys could really see it. So, this fabric we have here is taffeta. You know, it's really crisp, that type of thing. Hi, Sharita. I missed you the other night at the, on the Zoom call. Okay, so this is the taffeta. All right, let's take a look at this one. So, yeah. So, you know, of course, we got it. What kind of fabric is this? Chiffon. Look at that. She gets an A. It's chiffon. And chiffon is kind of really soft and it drapes well. Yep. Okay. All right. So, can you grab that other fabric over there for me? Okay. Yeah. All right. This one is, is the organza. It, Yes, it, it's stiff. It's a little stiffer than, it's definitely stiffer than the uh, chiffon. Okay, and and as far as, yes, yeah, stiffer than the chiffon, and as far as the tassel, it can depend on the weight and the fiber content. Okay, so some people like the organza and some like organdy. Organdy is just a little bit heavier. Let's take a look at something that may be organdy. Okay, we're gonna put that there. Let's pull the dress on. Okay, now this, this is one of my favorite blouses, and my friends tell me, if you wear that blouse one more time, so I'm just going to make some different colors. So uh, this one is organdy, and you see it has a little shine, like a little satin finish on it. Um, so sometimes people, you, you can drape on the dress form, like you do the flat pattern. This has a, uh, an arm on it. Let me show you the arm. Now the arm is a little bit bigger than... What the dress form is because I just grabbed the arm downstairs out of the uh look at that arm. Okay, so that arm is probably like a size 20. This is this is like a size what is this, a 10 or 8. So just want to show you that on the dress forms you can purchase it with the you know with the arm, you know, as an accessory. So let's go ahead and put that back on this one, please. Okay, all right. Now, so today we're gonna do Bishop sleep. Okay, we're gonna kind of talk about that. Okay, you, we good. Uh, that one there, that's the organza one. I had that one on the other day, and it's you know it's fit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm gonna share the screen because I'm not gonna. Today is Friday. I know everybody is uh, happy. It's the end of the week, just as I am, and that's why I always like to come and talk to you guys about the uh, Pattern Making Academy and the things that we are doing in there. And we have uh, skirt slopers in there. We have some more skirt styles in there. Um, we have some beginner stuff in there just for those who may need a refresher and some bonus videos. So that is really growing. And, you know, if you want to take part in that, I can always just, uh, you can go to our bit.ly. Um, let's see if I cannot post here. You can go to our bit.ly link and uh, making. just want to make sure you guys see that. Um, and if you if you care to uh, go look at the, you know, look at the platform, um, it's it, it's really good site. OK. All right. So like I said, we're going to share. I'm going to share some things with you as far as what the bishop sleeves looks like and all that type of stuff. We're going to share the screen and then I'll do a little demonstration or show you a demonstration that I have done. OK, and if you have questions, please make sure that you put it in the, in the chat. Now, I do. I must say that I'm using StreamYard. And so I have the House of Pamela Renee, you know, my business page and then my personal page, Pamela Lucas. And then here in the group with the fashion designers for life. So whenever, 
We use StreamYard and, you know, to come to you guys, I select all three, but I don't know which one is going to show up on. So maybe I should look at my phone to see if I'm showing up in the uh, Fashion Designs for Life group or it should show up all over. Where's it showing up on yours, Mew? It's on, okay, what is that, uh, my personal page one? Okay, so it's showing up on the personal page too. Only thing about it is sometimes I won't see the comments until later. I don't know about that. I'm gonna investigate that and kind of see like maybe I should use a, a different platform to get to you guys. So that way I wanna make sure I can see everybody's comments, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and share the screen. And uh, let's talk about the next thing that we have. Share. Okay, here we are. Today, sleeves. The topic, bishop sleeves. Okay, so now on our pattern making technique, we're gonna use a slash and spread technique. And then there's another one that some you know, more uh, advanced pattern makers will probably just use the pivot one. Okay, so let's take a look at this sleeve. So we see here, it's nice and smooth at the top, at the armhole, that's what we want with the bishop sleeve. And then this is where the gathers are and it goes into the cup, okay? Same with this side over here. Let's see, can we blow that up even more? Okay. All right. So now they have a few little gathers up there, but we, we're not using the gathers. We're not going to do, we're just going to do nice and smooth at the top. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. Okay. So let's blow this guy up right here. Okay. Smooth at the top. Now, <clears throat> this fabric looks like it might be a chiffon or something lightweight. So I bet you this area here where they slashed and spread for the excess, for the design ease, that's probably a lot. Maybe that's probably, I don't know, maybe three to one, four to one to the cup. Okay, now let's take a look at this other one. All right. Okay, so now this is real exaggerated right here. Some people may like this style. Some people may not. It looks really long and big. Uh, so I know if I was to try to eat dinner with that, I'd have spaghetti all over my sleeves. <laughs> all right. Okay. Now, if you're doing a home sewing method, then you it, this is what your bishop sleeve would look like. But there's so many things wrong with this, but I don't want to criticize. I just got this off the internet just to show it up. Uh, a um, bishop sleeve pattern from the home sewing pattern for those who were at that point. And then there's the, they have the cuff and I guess they're doing the slit a little bit differently, but there's, there's some things wrong with that layout. Okay. But as you learn more, you know more, uh, you know, so I'm going to go like this. Something's wrong with the layout. If you get what I mean. Okay. All right, now that we're going to do the method that I'm going to show you today is something like this. It's similar to this. I got this off the internet too, just to show you, uh, give you an idea of what we're going to do, or an idea of what I have done. But mine is just a teeny bit different uh, than this one. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. All right, and then uh, if anybody has any questions, any comments, any concerns, okay, Newey. Can you look to see on yours if there's any questions from maybe a different um, a different platform and let me know what they are because I don't see. I just see Sharita right here. All right, Sharita, I'm going to send you a, <clears throat> a text message or something because uh, we, well, what we're going to do, Sharita, we're going to put what we did on Wednesday. We'll put it in the um, in the portal so you still can see it. OK. All right. You're probably busy on Wednesday. All right, so any questions, you good? Okay, all right, so now it's 12.10, so we just been in here 10 minutes. So now I'm gonna share the screen so you can see the sloper, and then we're gonna talk about how I got that sleeve pattern to do what it did. And I might demonstrate it again because this amount of sleeve is not a lot. Um, so let me move this out of the way. And then, okay, let's go ahead and 
Share screen, guys. So moving on to the um. Okay, here. All right, so here we go. This is the sloper. The sleeve sloper. Okay. Then here is where I did the slash and spread method. So which meant that I was here. And then, uh, then I broke it up into fours, and then I spread it equal amounts. And then I have a little slit here for where our um, little slit will go for when we do our cup. Okay? So this is what that pattern looks like. That's the cup, and this is the slit. So, and the slit is cut on the bias, because when you sew these in, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off. And when you sew these in and you fold it over, you're gonna sew here and then down there, okay? So that's what that would be. And then so we would cut that and then, oh, here's a pair right here. Just to give you an idea, so the, the idea about, um, uh, designers not having to sew or should sew or should not sew, you at least need to know a little bit about it because in order to make the pattern, you have to be able to know a little something about it, okay? All right, I was just checking here to see if I see anybody. All right. All right. Oh, let me turn that down. Okay. All right, so um, you have to be able to at least know how the pieces are going to be put together. So we're going to move that up. And then, you know, so here would be the slit. And like I said, you would sew it here and flip it over that way. But uh, that's a whole nother total different lesson. Okay? Uh, of course, you would put some interfacing in your cuff. But let's go ahead. And, and we're gonna go ahead and draft one. So would you uh, put that over here for me, please? Thank you so much. Oh, let's take that, because we're gonna need that. Maybe we'll sew that up and we'll be wearing that for you next week. How about that? All right, so. Now we are just going to, let me see, would you see it? Okay, we're gonna turn it this way. And you can just, you can set it on the table over there. We're going to just mark around it. Okay, first thing we always want to make sure we do is have a grain line. Right smack there, down the center. Okay, yeah, we can use that one. Okay, thank you. So I'm just going to go like this. Is that a longer one? No, that, that looks, oh, that's the L square. So I'm just going to, then I'm just going to extend it. He's going to have this grain line going down the middle. So we can put this right on it. All right. And basically, <clears throat> we're just going to trace around it. So, like I was saying before, everything from the basic sloper. So, with this now basic sleeve sloper, we're just going to mark around it like so. And I like to just put a little extension right there. I don't need the uh, I don't need the elbow level. I kind of like to have this right here because I'm gonna do something like that. Okay, so now we're gonna separate this into fours. Hopefully, you can see it. Can you guys see those lines? Or do I need to get a darker marker? You know, so let's see what the darker marker would do. I just want to make sure you can see. So. Maybe as we go around, if I can stay on the right line. <laughs> so, you know, when you're drafting your patterns, and I say this all the time, that you want to make sure you use a nice fine point. I'm going to go ahead and use this darker marker so it will pick up real good and you can kind of see what we got going. Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, then here's our bicep level. Okay, like I said, we want to separate this. We want fours. 
All right, if I'm not into measuring and doing my calculations today, I'm just gonna half it. You know, I always say that and come here, I'm just gonna half it. I don't need to, I can use a string to get this right here. I'm gonna half it, take the same amount because I know these sides are equal. I'm gonna half it right there. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna half it. Okay, and then I'm gonna half it over here. Now we gotta take off the amount that we need for our, um, our cup. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this line here. Ba, 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 ba. This is the bishop sleeve, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you know, pattern makers do things differently. I'm not saying mine is right and theirs is wrong and theirs is right and mine is wrong. You just figure out what's the best way for you. I want my cup to be two inches wide. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to take this off. Now, let's talk about something else. Maybe, maybe you don't want to take it off. Maybe when you do your sleeve, you want your sleeve to hang down low. Or maybe you just want your bishop sleeve to be just like this. So whatever the amount of cup is, if your cup is wide, take that amount off. If you don't want it to be too hanging down too low, but if you want to do the fashion style or whatever you want to do, and you want to have a lot of break right here, a lot of ease, a lot of lap over, then you don't have to cut it off. Okay. All right. Now, this is the front. This is the back. We know that because one notch for the front, two notches for the back. Okay. Now, at this point, uh, what we want to do now is I'm going to drop this down three quarters of an inch right here. Why dropping it down three quarters of an inch? Think about your elbow. Think about when you're bending where your elbow is. You need more room right there. You don't want it to be cut off and be short right there. You need more room. I'm going to go grab my other room for the curve at the bottom. <laughs> Okay, so everybody clear why we dropped it down. We dropped it down because you need that elbow room, okay? Because when you bend, if you need more room here, you need more room here than inside the elbow you need on the outside. Okay, so that's why. And then basically you just, just bring that back over to here. Nothing there. And nothing here. Some people, okay, let's say this now. Some people come up right in here. I don't like to come up right in there because whatever you do, you got to make sure this and that matches. So I just go right there and I just go right there. Everybody see that? Clear on that? Any questions on that? If there's any questions on that, make sure you put them in the thread. Um, now I'm going to cut it out. First, I'm just going to cut this away from the rest of the paper. Okay, there's something that I just did right. What I should have done with this is I should have moved my draft maybe to the edge of the paper so I wouldn't waste so much paper. But trust and believe, these little pieces I'm going to use because we still need a cuff, right? We still need the, the sleeve slit. So we're just going to go ahead and cut here. <laughs> And these are some of the things that, that we do in our uh, subscription membership portal. All types of sleeves. We can really do a two-piece man's tear with sleeve. We're gonna do a raglan sleeve. We're gonna do a dolman sleeve, a kimono sleeve. And then we're gonna do some special design sleeves. You know, where we can slash and spread. And, all kinds of fun stuff as we're designing. But you have to make sure that you know the basics. Because if you don't know the basics, then how can you really get some design in there? Okay, now I got some other stuff underneath here, so I'm just going to pull some more paper this way. All right, so now the slash and spread method is I'm gonna cut, okay? Now, I'm getting ready to Slash, spread, and tape it down. There's something I need to do to this piece of paper here first. Can anybody tell me what that might be? Let me stop sharing a moment so I can take a peek at you. All right. 
All right, Sharika, I understand. You were, you were at work. Okay, there's a Facebook user that says hi. I'm sorry, I don't see your name. Okay. All righty. Okay, so here we go. If you said you need a gray line, you are absolutely correct. Let me go back to Sharon. If you said you need a gray line, that's good. All right, so now we're going to go to share. And we're going to finish this up. <laughs> All right, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we did this from the sloper. We're going to put that to the side. And we said we needed that, that grain line. Always, always, always have your grain line, people. Always, always. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, so, okay. Can you hand me that, uh, the old one, please? I think that we need more. Mm. What I mean by more mm, is when we did, here's our grain line, we came two inches over, two inches over, and then we did two inches in between. Okay, you know, and if you think about that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my little notches up here. This will probably be a good one for work, maybe, or something that's not too uh, fancy. Yes, can you help me take those off? Thank you. She's so helpful, I don't even have to ask her. She's just like, ah, oh, let me help my teacher out because she needs some help here. <laughs> All right, so my point on this is when we go to pull this in, okay, I'm gonna give this one back to you. And may I see the cuff, please? What we're looking at, we're looking at the amount of gathers that we wanna put. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so this is our cuff. And by the time, and you know, our cuff has a extension. But by the time we gather this up, it's not, it's kind of big, but not that big. It's not that big. So I want more. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to get all of that back here. We'll probably sew that up later. Okay. I, I don't want, I, I, I want more. Mm. I want my bishop sleeve to, when I, you know, especially if it's going to be something on the runway, fashionable. And if it's a chiffon, um, if this is chiffon, the chiffon, you really need more to gather up with the chiffon because it's soft, it's going to just fall and flow. But if you have, if you're going to use the organza or the organdy or even the taffeta, if you use that, you don't need that much because that's really going to bellow out and be big. So uh, that's why some people like to drape it and some people like to use a flat pattern method. If you drape it, then right there you can see the amount of uh, amount of ease, the amount of gathers you're going to put in it. But if you flat pattern it, you kind of already have to have some idea of what you want to do. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to cut it right down the middle. But I'm not going to cut it all the way apart. I'm going to cut it right to the tip. Okay, now I'm going to put a piece of tape up here, right there. Now, I want my bishop sleeve to say, here I am, people, check me out. I'm going to put three inches in between this grain line and this line will be cut, okay? Three inches. Some little tape right there. Three inches on the other side. Okay, make sure everything else is nice and flat. Okay, now I need to cut right here because I'm going to put another three inches. I wonder if that's enough. Do I want more? Hmm, all depends. If I'm going to use the taffeta, maybe the three inches is enough. If I want a chiffon, I want more. So now, what should I put in between here, ladies and gentlemen? Anybody paying attention? You said three inches, that's correct. Looks like I want more. 
Let's do four. I don't know if you can see me. We're going to do four. Okay. So I want one. Okay. One, two. If this goes down the runway, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want no little bitty teeny weeny sleeve. You want something that's going to say, whoa, I love it. One, two, three, four. There it is on that runway. I mean, I've done some sleeves. And we want this to be flat, remain flat, with meaning no gathers at the armhole. Okay. So now if I got four over here, I need four over there. And let's turn this graph this way. We're looking at this bottom part here right now. Let me go ahead and cut this one. It's fun to design. You know, if you love what you're doing, it's it's work, but it's really not work. Because you can sit here all day and design stuff and, and drape. Next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. We're like, oh my God, one, two, three, four inches. I'm gonna pull this over because I want four. Then we have to reshape our at the top. Okay, four inches over here. One, two, three, four. All right. Yes, yes. That still could be bigger, but I, I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it alone right now. Like I said, when I eat dinner, I don't want my sleeve. I don't want spaghetti on my sleeve. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and take our curve and um all right let's see how we have we have this i want to make sure that i get the bottom ones because that's the one that has the most length i don't want to cut stuff off if anything i want to add okay so when I get ready to do my curve, I'm going to come around like so. First of all, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I, a lot of times I just eyeball it first, and then I come back with my curve. Is it an exact science? No, but close. So here I come here. Now that's looking like a nice curve, nice and smooth, coming around this way, nice and smooth. Bring it back up to here. Some people go like this, right here. Curve it a little bit right there because you want this side to match up to the other side. Now I'm gonna come around like so. All right. So if you want to learn how to do this, if you're interested in doing this, you come to my 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 uh academy, pattern making and draping. I'll show you. We got videos that are really instructional, good videos. And then every Wednesday, if you have a question on it, every Wednesday I am available to you. Okay, nice curve. Yes, I did cut some off on that side. All right, now let's look at the top. Let's go ahead and try to get that nice and smooth. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of refine it a little bit, true it up a little bit. That looks good right there. Oh yeah. Let's look at the other side. Let's put a little piece of tape here. And then this is going to be our bishop's sleeve. We're going to cut this out of something. Mooney and I, we're going to make something out of this. Probably either, maybe we'll do a test. What do you think, Mooney? Maybe we should do one out of the organza and one out of the chiffon so we can see how it lays, the difference. Mooney's saying like, yeah, okay. Yep, that's what we're going to do. All right. That's the front. Here's the back. Wide. One dart, one notch in the front, two in the back. Then, of course, you add your seam allowances. Everybody clear on that? Add your seam allowances, and then you, you cut it out, okay? Now, let's take a look at, let's think about the cuff. Think about the cuff like a waistband. And uh, so, 
All right. This cup is different because it's a little bit more um, specialized cup. We just talk about a regular cup like on a man's shirt cup. OK, kind of sort of. Let's say we want our cup to be two inches wide. And we want it to finish. This is what you want to think about. Let me grab my. Let's see your wrist. Uh, we, yes. Yeah, just the wrist. OK, so how tight do we want this? So if we put it at, at, we can put it at six inches, that's kind of tight. We can go to six and a half because we don't want it to fall down. If we have all that bellowing with the bishop sleeve, with the design, we don't want it to be so big that's going to fall down. So let's say hmm, we're just going to get her seven inches and she still has a lot of room in there, but it's not going to fall down too low. OK, so. If it's seven inches finished, and then you know we have to have that lap over for the button, let's give it an inch and a half lap over. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're doing the cup. Um, you know, this is the sleeve. What time is it? Oh my goodness, you guys are getting a lot of time out of me today. This is the sleeve. You know you're gonna cut two, right? When we say cut two, we mean cut two pieces of fabric. All right, here's gonna be our cup. So I want my cup two inches wide. I'm just going to fold it in half because just like a waistband, you need two inches here and two inches underneath. OK, so make it easy on yourself. Just fold it. Now I'm going to just fold it Come here. I'm going to come right here. I need a half inch seam allowance. Then we said we're going to make it seven inches, right, Mui? Miu? Seven inches is right here. All right. Then we need our inch and a half lap over. Why? Because of the button. It don't have to be an inch and a half. It could be an inch. It depends on how big those buttons you're going to put. If you're going to put a real big old gigantic button, then you got to have more lap over. If it's a smaller button, you probably can get away with an inch. But we're going to go ahead and do an inch and a half. So I just came over an inch and a half. And then I have to do my half inch seam allowance. And then remember the half inch seam allowance down here. Look at that. We are there. Uh, let's see something here. Okay, let's grab the, the stapler. Whenever you're cutting two pieces of paper, use a stapler because you want it to you want to cut it as one and you don't want it to move around on you. You know how sometimes you don't do that. You just hold it down here and cut. Then next thing you know, it's all off on the other side. Make sure you do it this way. So now I'm just going to cut here. And we are just about done. We need that sleeve slit, though. And normally the sleeve slit is three and a half inches and the cut. All right. So... Then we would notch this. We're going to notch it right here so we know how much lapping over. right? So we know that the, the, the body of the sleeve, the gavit part, only goes from here to here. This part here is the other part that laps over. Okay? All right? From here, here, and here. Okay? And then you want to open that up. Okay? You good? All right, let's do the slit and then we're done. Let's talk about the slit first. The slit needs to come halfway. So, in the back. So, if I come from here to here, whatever the halfway mark is, that's where my slit's going to be. Right there. And we want the slit to be, what we say, three and a half inches. Now, make your slits. Don't make it parallel to the grain line. You kind of want to make it, thank you. You kind of want it to be a uh, 90 degree angle from this curve, okay? So that's what we want. It looks a little off, but it's not. And we want three and a half. One, two, three and a half. That's going to be our slit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen? So now, let's... Go ahead and get that bias strip. Same thing, fold in half. If it's three and a half, three and a half, and three and a half is seven. Right? 
Okay, we need a half inch seam allowance on both sides, that's eight. And then for that part that kind of turns the corner, always give it a quarter of an inch. So that means we need to have it eight and a quarter. Let's do that one more time. Three and a half and three and a half is seven, plus a half inch and half inch for the seam allowance, that's eight, plus a quarter of an inch for just the sewing and manipulating and turns. So it's eight and a quarter. So here we go. And we want it to be three eighths of an inch wide. So, can you have me a white paper over there, please? Because I'm gonna put the white paper down. Yeah, there we go, just like that, that's good. I'm gonna put that down so you can really see what I got. Actually, let's do this. Let me give that back to you. Here you go. All right, here we go. Here, three eighths of an inch wide. <laughs> quarter of an inch seam allowance because we don't need a whole half an inch in there. Okay, and we said eight and a quarter inches long. So we just need it to be eight and a quarter. Flip this over, eight and a quarter. That includes our seam allowances and everything. All right, remember, like I said before, it's still two pieces of paper. We want it to remain the correct dimension throughout that whole pattern piece. I'm gonna give this back to you. Thank you. And then we're gonna cut here. And remember, this is a bias strip. So our grain line is going to be at a 45 degree angle. All right, would you open that up for me, please? Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just look at us. We are really just moving here today. This is our cuff. Cut how many, ladies and gentlemen? How many? Very good. Cut two. And you can also cut two of the interfacing. We already have seam allowance on this. So you have to add seam allowance to your sleeve. I like the see-through ruler. Why? Because it's quicker, it's faster. I'm just going to put it right here, a half-inch seam allowance that I need. Please make sure you know your measurements. If you're doing the, the, the inches or if you're doing centimeters, whatever you're doing, make sure you know it. Because when you start to grade this, it's going to matter. If you got a small, you want to grade it to a medium, you don't know your, uh, your, your inches or your ruler or your centimeters, it's going to come out wrong. And you want to be professional. You want to be good at what you do. You want to be proud of what you're doing when you do it. You want people to say, yeah, if she's doing the pattern, you better believe it's right. You don't want people to say, ah, uh, 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 yeah, okay, it's nice. Uh -huh, talk to you later. Bye. Click. You don't want that. You want them to say, okay, yep, I'll have confidence in this person that they know what they're doing. Because they're practicing. They're studying. They not, it's not a joke. It's not a hobby. It's a living. It's a life. It's a lifestyle. It's what you want to do. It's what you want to be remembered for. Follow what I'm saying. All right. Then you would cut this out right here. So if you have any questions, if, if you have to talk to me privately, you can direct message me, Pamela Lucas, or the House of Pamela Renee, or even in my Fashion Designers for Life group. Okay? All righty. And please try out the, um, even if you just try it out for one month. Okay, my battery is running low. Um, so let's see. Rui, can you plug that in over there? Let's see. Uh, uh, where is it? You see it? You see? Oh, there it is. All right. Sorry, guys. I just get so, I just get so involved in what I'm doing. The plug. I had to make sure I had the plug in. All right, so we're just about done, ladies and gentlemen. We really need to have a, have a full session right here uh, on how to do a bishop's sleeve. And then, of course, you put it, uh, you know, your notches and everything in, that type of thing. If you got questions on this, you can ask me. No problem. All right? Okay. Get some questions there. We good? Let's see what we're looking at. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> That's Asia. Yes, yeah, about cutting straight. Yes, Asia. Yeah, you're right. Thank you for watching. I hope the baby is well. Hope to see you soon. Let's get that vaccine shot. And so you can come and we can kind of hang out. Here is our bias strip. The way we make it bias is, I probably have to show this on a different camera, but can you hand me that white piece of paper right there, please? So if you like bishop sleeves, now you know how to how to do one, right? So I'm just going to draw the straight line. If you look at this ruler, okay. This is a this is a here is an inch and it's squared right there. If I take my ruler, my see-through ruler, and here is the corner of that square and the other corner of the square. I make sure it's on that line. Then here's my 45 degree angle right there. There it is. If you need more help with that, let me see if I can break it down a little bit better. I'm going I'm to do this one. I'm going I'm to come here. Two inches. Okay. This is the square. Two, 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 two. Everybody clear on that? All I gotta do is go from corner to corner, corner to corner, bam, right there, corner to corner. That would be your bias grain line. So when you take, if this is your fabric, pretend like this is your fabric right here. Pretend like this is your fabric. And here's the, here's the edge. When you lay this pattern down, it's gonna lay like this. Why? Because there's the grain line, it's gonna be parallel to the selvage edge, okay? Very important, ladies and gentlemen. One more time, how did I get that bias grain line? Imagine a square, two inches here, two inches here, two inches, okay? Go from corner to corner, corner to corner, and that's your bias. So on this pattern, on this pattern, I put the corner here. Like I said, I'm probably gonna have to show this on a different camera where can really zoom up. Corner there, and then the other corner here, I can go take it down there. And as I go across, as I go across, that gives me the bias line. Okay, so we have the cuff, the bias strip, we have the sleeve. We're going to stop sharing. Oh, my goodness, it's 1244. Look at that. All right. The baby's doing good. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Okay. All righty. All right. Hi, Kayla Moore. Okay. All righty. So that's it for today. Can you think of anything else, Neil? Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. Okay. I explained it pretty good. All right. Okay. All right. So um, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we did the bishop sleeve. Next week, we got a couple of surprises for you. So make sure you tune in every Friday. All right. The Fashion Friday, the House of Pamela Renee, where fashion meets education. Thank you. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Be kind to somebody. All righty. Bye-bye.